thank you sir for your warm welcome address today we are fortunate to have amongst us former chairman isro former member of rajya sabha dr kasturi rangan our as our chief guest under his dynamic leadership india forayed into many successful missions with the definition of india's first planetary mission chandrayaan 1 sir has been instrumental as the head of the drafting committee of the new education policy sir has been conferred with several prestigious awards and is indeed our national pride may we kindly request you sir to deliver your speech on the operational era in remote sensing the irs saga please sir thank you very much for this privilege i would like to at the outset thank dr shivan uh, chairman isro and also dr neelesh desai the president of the irs and then all the members of the irs 1c community many of them are here today with us uh, speaking on this particular occasion i would like to greet and all others who are present here i would like to greet all of them at this very august occasion that of celebrating the silver jubilee of the launch of irs 1c i i had initially a thought that i should say a few words about each of these people who are going to speak here they were my most valuable colleagues you minus them and there is no irs 1c so that is the kind of criticality that they have played with respect to the designing the building the testing and evaluation and ultimately its proof in the orbit each one of them had a very critical and singular role so when nilesh said that uh, george joseph came out with this idea that we should have this 25 year celebration i think he was thinking of this kind of a thing that it will be an occasion to remember them and all they represent in terms of people and the work culture that led to the irs 1c mission but uh, before i say something about uh, this i i would only like to say i'm so happy to see each one of them whether it is george joseph who was actually the mainstay for any specific or optical system in fact in a sense he set up a parallel uh, optical laboratory which is probably i used to always say it is equivalent to the perkin almer uh, in sac and then you had kiran kumar the wonder boy who always came out with solutions where people were completely against a block with respect to resolution uh, he sees a particular functioning and he comes out with a total solution that is kiran kumar goel he has a solution for everything and he is the man who could bet with the chairman when something chairman had skeptical he was confident and then he extracted a month one salary from the chairman but that turned out to be one rupee simply because of the fact that chairman was drawing only one rupee from his row but then that's another story but that is goel and then you have got dr navel gon no boot application loses the beginning escapes his scrutiny he is extremely critical very much go for perfection and excellence and therefore the quantification of the remote sensing data i think he is really the guardian that these numbers are the right ones shailesh he has worked in some of the most difficult problems in remote sensing the very low radiation that come from the ocean and the kind of separation that you need to do against the noise and thereby make ocean sat a meaningful especially the multi the, the the hyperspectral kind of instruments uh, to really catch up the radiation say from the phytoplankton and those kind of ocean i think shailesh has played a very very significant role in trying to create a capability in this country and thus bringing us uh, to a world standard i do of course don't know much about mehul pandya and nitin padalia but i know that if they are here then they mean something kalyan i think i have to say something because he was my right hand left hand and everything and at a time when i was not even well he carried the formula i should say he was not only just the project director he was in charge of the whole program that is kalyan and somebody has uh, yeah, neelis said he is a task master there is no question on that he really wanted to get things done in time and at the same time he never forsook the issues of quality reliability <clears throat> and so on i think in a sense he was a single point critical person in the success of irs 1c 
we not only I am so happy and eager to see him. I don't see him very often nowadays, but then I'm very eager. But I know the criticality of his role in the context of IRS series itself and IRS one C in particular. Ram Ratan, I think he's a legendary figure, if you ask me. Uh, he, nothing is impossible for him. Optical sensors and especially the kind of things that IRS once he had to have. I think Ram, Ram Ratan played an extremely <coughs> critical role. Uh, he had a strong basis on the optical remote sensing. He is very strong in optics. He is a student of Professor Ghatak in Delhi University. And uh, he really has carried it forward. So I salute him today uh, when I see him having realized a camera of this class. So the net result of these people is the fact that today, when IRS went up in Orchid, IRS 1C, he was the best in the world. And there was civil in the civilian domain. And uh, the history, the saga of the more sensing program, when you talk of IRS 1A and 1B, we build it with a very specific ob uh, objective in the mind. We should catch up with a kind of capability that Landsat at that time had. And so that at 30 meters, we can have the rice fields and other things clean. And 70 meters more as a replacement for a Landsat system, which is 70 meter. So we had that first level of ability to see the ground system, ground, ground elements at uh, 35 meters and 70 meters, one replacing or one working along with the Landsat similar capability. And the second one, which is specific to India, the small sizes of the Elias field and agriculture was one of the more important things. So that was the genesis. It was decided by George Joseph and others that we will go for an, a reflective, uh, refractive optics. Very good one, very good choice at that particular point in time. And very good optical efficiency and things of that kind, one of its kind anywhere in the world, the choice of the of refractive optics. And from then, that is the time at which we equaled ourselves with respect to Landsat system in some sense. But then the question that was raised, and I used to always hear this song from um, among the other people in Israel, maybe it is from SAC, that um, the question that was raised in one of the reviews was that we have built something which is world equivalent. But why always we all equivalent to the best of the world? Why don't some people tell us, Americans tell us, French tell us, that Indians have built a satellite, let us emulate it because they have built the best satellite. So the 1C genesis, according to what I have heard, is that people, the engineers, the scientists in SAC and ISAC wanted a satellite where the Americans have to say, let us do this and rather rattle them, rather than we getting rattled every time because somebody else does it. So that is the genesis. And what is interesting is, whether it is in the context of optics, whether it is in the context of satellites, whether it is in the context of the mission planning, and most importantly also to look at the various kinds of choices of bands and so on. I think it was one of the things in which an end-to-end -end effort was made with thoroughness, a thoroughness and professionalism that was brought into right from definition of what the wavelength bands has to be included for the first time a near infrared region. And then a resolution, which is something like 5.6 meters and 23 meters, and a certain revisit capability. Uh, these were made them so, and also an optic system. And in fact, uh, I have discussed it threadbare on, on because I wanted to make a lecture of this in an in academy science meeting. So I wanted to know what the IRS 1C pan camera was like and how did you reach the level of optics that is with that it carried a reflective optics. And that to uh, non-centric uh, non uh, reflective optics, you needed a wider uh, coverage. And then, of course, the question of whether it should have a photodial optic configuration or a regular type of configuration. These were fairly involved design issues. And Kiran gave me an extraordinarily nice lecture on how exactly they arrived at. And uh, then I had, of course, discussion with Dr. George Joseph. And if you now, if I go back several years back is the time in which I had this discussion, but there is so strongly etched in mind simply because of the fact that there were details which were so well thought of, so well explained and so well implemented and showed itself as the proof of the pudding when it went and put the images, a 5.5 meter image was so thrilling to see the kind of detail that it, whether it is in the, the north, the south Bombay a tip or a satellite, a, 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 a kind of an image 
uh, from some of the, the Middle East countries and things of that kind. They were extraordinary in quality, clear, clarity, and of course, in application, their potential was unmatched at that time as a civilian satellite. So that is a kind of a thing. The SAG drove it, and the ISAC had, to, of course, after the SAG drove, drove it, ISAC had to build the control systems. That was also one of the most difficult part of it. Dr. Goyal played an extremely critical role in trying to make sure that they, we went on discussing about jitter and stability and what are really the ad nauseum keeps discussing do we go to get the real jitter whether you get because we are talking about pixel and the pixel wide resolution is so much critically dependent on the, the precision of the jitter and the, as well as the, the stability so that kind of a thing so we got a satellite which is capable of doing this we had a camera system which was one of the unique in the world uh, which we built a reflective optics which is uh, and with the non-centric uh, reflective optics and uh, the designs and development testing evaluation and evaluation itself is a major task these are all part of the irs 1c saga i want to say this uh, beyond irs 1c saga in terms of the reflective in the optics as well as the bus the bus itself was something which we went into great detail how well the bus not only with respect to the design consideration of an optimal approach failure mode analysis and also looking at if a failure occurs in a particular way, what happens to the mission? Is there a way in which we retrieve back? And if that is to be there, is the provision to be built into the satellite? So these are the kind of things. And I think it was a marvelous thing. That is where I remember Kalyan, I remember Goyal, and many others uh, who really came out with solutions with respect to introducing the failure modes so that a single point failure of the type, which can be admitted, for example, in INSAT, uh, we don't repeat it here. And I think it proved itself. Nine years of life in orbit was a remarkable feat with respect to this. And I would like to say that this is this is this really was an saga of that particular thing. Why I consider all this is today, I think we have moved very much beyond uh, the IRS 1C. We have got also be the always we had this vision that we should go beyond the question of uh, we have single remote sensing system. We should even think of thematic satellites. Thematic satellites could, it could be a cartosat for mapping application. It could be a resource application, resource sat where you bring in really the major earth resources component of it. You bring in very high resolution radiometer sensors, which is used for meteorological purposes. You build a remote so ocean satellite where you've got this um, the, the multi-channel uh, almost like hyperspectral systems, uh, as well as as well as scatter scatterometers, altimeters, and radiometers, which is the ocean ocean side part of it. So, and then of course, cat sat and so on and the other kinds. So, the, the in a sense, it has mutated. The basic IRS has mutated into multiple configuration, multiple application, more focused directions for applications. And today, you have a whole host of satellite series which has come out of it. And what is interesting is one could seek design of the bus in doing this kind of a thing. So the, the, the design of the bus was fairly robust with respect to its ability to adopt to different kinds of mission. And uh, the, the so today we are moving in that kind of a strength to strength with kind of 26, 25 meter resolution in a cartosat kind of a configuration is a one class of thing. This is all that at this particular point, but certainly we are entering into a new era. And I want to come to the chairman of ISRO, who has in the last three, four years has been moving ISRO in directions, uh, which was not what exactly it was before. First and foremost is, of course, improving the capabilities of grand vehicles, perfecting the GSLV Mark III, and the questions of looking at the newer propulsion systems, uh, kerosene, the, 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 the kerosene, uh, the kind of uh, fuel or methane kind of a thing more advanced than semi cryogenic systems. So the work on that also is progressing. The the launch vehicle program has become much more focused and directed and well in the well entrenched with respect to the futuristic requirements of more heavier system to be launched. So that is one aspect of it. And of course the the, the kind of vision that uh, the present ISRO has got is to finally take it into a multi-ton kind of a thing, not even at six tons and eight tons at GTO, uh, but take it to 25 tons. And when world is looking at 100 tons, 
we are talking of this kind of a thing. So that is how uh, ISRO is moving. On the satellite side, of course, it has grown several ways. I said IRS mutation strategy of this kind. Now, every satellite, whether it's the navigation system, now we should go into the next of the navigation systems. And then you have the communication satellite system, the older concept that we use, um, we, where you have to have the frequency you, you reuse and many other kinds of application where you create an optimality, much more autonomous capability on board and things of that kind. These are all now being tested with respect to the more, more advanced GSAT systems, which are currently being uh, built. So that is one part of it. And then, of course, there are the scientific satellites. And what is interesting about scientific satellites is we have been able to abort um, um, uh, advanced, particularly in astronomy and astrosat, for example, several concepts of control system. You need exceptionally high pointing and accuracies, uh, so pointing accuracies, jitter accuracy when it comes to astrosat, astrosat. We have to derive the considerable heritage from the IRS-1C and the follow-on satellites with respect to that. So that is the other part of it. And then, of course, it comes to the question of application and application now slowly moving into a regime where there will be a lot of commercial activities on the IRS, uh, on the on the application. Uh, I wish to say that uh, Dr. Shivan has now brought in a restructured ISRO, which will facilitate more and more industries to get into it, more and more commercial activities to be a part of it more and more of this kind of international systems coming together to get a final in expanding our own scope of activities here and so, so there are several ways in which and for that through itself will have several types of uh, structuring uh, with uh, semi-independent capabilities uh, but with an integrated uh, decision making system and uh, these are all going to reflect itself in the coming years as a major transformation the way in which currently the ISRO is, is, and it was a timely step that ISRO has taken. I would like to compliment Shivan in this fora with respect to what has been done for ISRO. I think it's good, but it'll, it'll certainly show with certain time, but government is fully backing. I understand the Prime Minister took a personal review several times of the kind of restructuring that would help ISRO and also further grow the industries and then create a real commercial niche for ISRO's uh, capabilities in a wider market, both within India and abroad. So he has taken given very specific direction to enable uh, this kind of a thing and he has promised the support. And I also understand in a subsequent months later, it was highly appreciative of the Shivan and team. Uh, for having accomplished already the first toward, uh, steps towards moving towards this kind of a reorganized structure of ISRO. I think ISRO that way is now moving well, well directed, and certainly it has a, a, a framework in which we can see even bigger things happening, more challenging things happening. And so far as this community is concerned, all I would like to say is that we should not uh, at a time when IRS was at the 1C, 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D times, I used to appraise uh, Vajpayee, who was then the Prime Minister and he was our boss, uh, about the marketing. And I used to say that IRS today has a 40% sales in the global sales of imageries. And this struck uh, the Prime Minister very much. So after two reviews, uh, when he had a third review on the various aspects of his source program, he asked me one question suddenly from his own uh, the recalling of his memory. Uh, what has happened that 40% uh, has it increased further? He asked. So this is the kind of importance he gave. We need to come back to that kind of a situation because today there is much more competition, much more sophistication in satellites, the ability to pinpoint a place on the earth and get it in 24 hours time is something which is quite realistic. And it is against this kind of an environment that we have to compete. It's not simple competition, but there is going to be a tremendous systemic effort that is needed to compete in this kind of a market. But ISRO having shown what it can at a time when one see, one cannot dream of in the world, we dreamt of it and we achieved it. I think for that organization, nothing is impossible. And with the new policy of the government and what Dr. Shivan and his team has initiated, I think that combined with the ISRO's credibility and credentials, I think we should be able to reach levels where we will again come back uh, to a preeminent position, even in creating innovative applications and also as one of the largest suppliers of remote sensing information for a variety of applications across the world. And I use this opportunity 
to congratulate all the members of the ISRO community, the present and the past, and also the youngsters who are sitting as the future ambassador, as the future people. Uh, I wish them all the very best. It is a 2021 which is dawning, and I am sure the 21, 2021 and beyond, our new resolution would be one that we will take the ISRO to even higher heights than we have ever imagined. And I wish all of you the very best in this effort. Thank you.